Hello guys, my name is Miguel Sapero. I am one of the makers of the Voxel Farm menu. In this update we will see lakes and water. Coming up with the location for lakes turned out to be quite a challenge. This is difficult because you start with terrain, you really don't know what is the best location for a lake. Because a lake has to meet certain properties. You want the lake to be flat, you want to make sure that the the height of the water around the shore is, is mostly the, the same and this is a challenge if you're starting from any any kind of uh, terrain so this system we have now by looking at the terrain it is able to figure out what is the best location for, for lakes and it can do it in real time so as you advance you get more of this generated on the fly we can also do rivers but this is not seen in this update now once we know where the water is we can generate voxels out of that information. These voxels eventually are turned into polygons, which are used for rendering. So all the tricks you normally see rendering water, like adding waves, refraction, and reflection, uh, this is something you would still apply pretty much the same way you would do it before. Still, the water is made out of voxels, and this provides a few advantages. Let's see now what happens when we carve terrain near the shore. As you can see, I'm making holes where the water is, and it appears as if the water was moving into the, the spaces I, I make. But this is not really happening, this is just a, a trick. What's going on is that there is a much larger layer of water going under the surface, and by just digging near the lake, you're exposing the, the water that is underneath. In the past few weeks, we also spent some time improving our physics. While we were testing this, we realized it was actually quite fun just to break things and see how they fall apart. It seems like destroying things was kind of also a creative act. There is something else we want to show in this update, and this is something you already saw in this video. I'm talking about our new rendering system. As we added new systems like the water and physics, we had to update our old render, and it appeared that we had to put a lot of effort into it anyway. So we chose to start a new rendering prototype, and this is what you're seeing here. This one handles water properly. We also get the very nice integration of the moving solids we have for physics with the rest of the terrain and all the voxel elements. It looks like everything is actually the same. The objects in the, in the physics, they will cast shadows as they move. They will also receive the illumination from the rest of, of the environment. And now we can do things we couldn't do before. So before we had a maximum distance at which you would get shadows. If you had a tower or something like that that was really distant, you would not get a shadow for it. Now it's different. Now we have consistent shadows throughout the entire world. It is also a physically based rendering system. So this will make it easy to bring interesting materials and properties and other effects into what you see on a screen. And then over the last few weeks, we did a lot of improvements to our clipboard system. This is something we show in some other videos we posted before. So I will not spend too much time on this, but the idea is now you can use any arbitrary shape to copy voxels from the world. And then, once you're gonna paste them, you can rotate them, you can give them any orientation and scale you want. I think this opens a new set of possibilities when you're building. So that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this update, stay tuned for the next.